today on We Love It Outdoors. Got my daughter, my middle child, Elizabeth, with me here this morning. We're going to be heading up to the Red River. And what are we going to do? Catfish. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Look at that. Nice one. That's a big one. Probably in that 11, 10 and a half, 11 pound class, so. I'm Dan Eigen, full-time guide and avid outdoorsman. These days, it's easy to get stuck inside in a virtual world. But the real world is outside. Look at that awesome looking fish. So I challenge you to put your instincts to work making real memories with real people. <laughs> because we love it outdoors. The mighty Red River of the North, 550 miles of muddy water winding its way through some of the finest agricultural country in the world. While the river is invaluable as an irrigation source and serves as a boundary between North Dakota and Minnesota, it may be one of the most underrated and underutilized fisheries in the upper Midwest. But it shouldn't be, because underneath its muddy exterior, it is a thriving multi-species fish factory that includes a variety of rough fish, a trophy walleye population, and one of the finest channel cat fisheries in the country. Those are some big channel cats. Today, my daughter Elizabeth and I are headed west to see for ourselves what the Red River has to offer. But since river fishing isn't my usual forte, we've got to make a stop at Mills Fleet Farm to stock up on some supplies. We got some butterworms. Butterworms. Should we grab a bag of crawlers? Or? So you're gonna have you're gonna have crawlers, and you're gonna have cheese balls on your hands tonight, <laughs> and a big slimy catfish. And then what flavor do you think they're gonna like? See, this is chicken livers. The Red River is one of only about 20 rivers in North America that flow north. From its beginning in Wahpeton Breckenridge, north into Canada, where it ends in giant Lake Winnipeg. We're gonna concentrate on a section of the river that runs right through the cities of Fargo, North Dakota and Moorhead, Minnesota. Our guide is a true river rat, John Dreschel, who grew up chasing channel cats and other species in and around the Fargo-Moorhead area. What is the biggest cat that you've ever heard of coming out of this system? You know, I've heard of 30 plusers. Um, I've never, I've seen, I've seen a 29 pounder. Physically seen it, hmm. um, but I know, I know people talk about catching 30 plus pounders. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here. The water comes around this bend up here and it kind of straightens out um, and it, this is one of the spots we catch golden eyes. So we're going to try to catch a couple golden eyes and maybe try to catch a catfish while we're trying to catch a golden eye. Okay. So. Catfish and specifically channel cats are notorious scent feeders and when you look at where they live it's easy to see why. Loaded with silt from farm runoff, visibility in the red is normally only a matter of inches. Fresh, smelly cut bait is the key, and according to John, the best bait is the same bait the cats eat every day. In the red, that means an oily, silver-sided fish called a gold eye or moon eye. So before we get serious about catching catfish, we gotta catch some catfish bait. The golden eyes seem to sit in the main current channel, so what we did was we positioned ourselves in a spot where we can do two things. We have some sucker minnows, we have a tree in the water that we can try to catch catfish out of, so we can pitch a bait a little farther down and one out in the main current a little farther down, and then we can fish closer to us and try to catch some moon eyes, which we're gonna use for bait later. Uh, we'll catch those moon eyes on some night crawlers and just a, just a Lindy rig and a heavier version because we just need a little more sinker weight than the quarter or three eighths that you usually Lindy rig with, so. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that's what we're looking for. That's huh? what we want right there. Drax. Look at that. That is a pretty fish. 
and that is gonna catch us a big catfish tonight. Look at that. The fish are fishing by smell. If you watch, when I stick my hand in the water, you don't go very far. I'm not even into my wrist and you can't see my fingertips. So the fish aren't fishing by sight or feeding by sight, they're feeding by smell. They, they smell that bait when we cut it. That's why we cut our sucker minnows up. Um, that's why we're gonna cut that moon eye or golden eye that Dan just caught. We'll cut them in probably five pieces. And then all that oil from that fish, it's an oily fish. It's like white fish. It's one of the fish that people smoke because it's oilier. Um, and that oil, when you cut it up, then that'll all get in the water and it'll help, help them find that bait in the water. So if we could catch one or two more of those, then we'd start hunting cats. On the border between Minnesota and North Dakota, the We Love It Outdoors crew, along with local catfish expert John Dreschel and my daughter Elizabeth, are in search of trophy channel catfish. We've started the trip catching our bait, gold eyes and moon eyes, the native forage for the cats. But we're also enjoying one of the best parts of river fishing, the fact that the river is loaded with fish. They all bite and you never know what's hanging on to the other end of the line. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I've never seen those. Look at your little lids. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. Here, you take them and release them. That's the fun thing about fishing a river. I mean, we're fishing for our bait right now, but we've caught catfish and Is carp and, huh? Nope, nope. Oh my gosh, it feels so weird. You know, and that's what we talked about earlier. When you fish in the river, there's lots of fish in here. Lots of species, lots. And you put a night crawler on and you'll catch everything that's in here at some point. What's the biggest walleye you've ever caught out of here? Uh, about 10 and a half pounds. Well, it's 5.45, John. Yeah, we got some bait and we got some backup bait if we need it. Um, I think it's time to go look for some catfish. We had one little cat bite here. We might fish this spot again later on, come back when it's prime time, because we've got a pretty good hole here and then it comes up into these trees. So it's probably time to just go look for catfish. Let's do it. Pull anchor, Elizabeth, and let's go catch some big fish. With plenty of bait in hand, we turn our full attention to the catfish. So if you divide it kind of in thirds and go up that third line so we can fish this tree, we're gonna have to put an anchor in, you know, I don't know, 50 yards in front of it. We'll anchor down back and then we okay. cast up to it. Okay. Like most river predators, catfish seek the refuge of current breaks using log jams, deeper holes, or even man-made structures to escape the full current and ambush their prey. So we're going to anchor past it so we come down and the boat will stop just about in front of the culvert okay. and we can fish all down here below. We can, if, if it's a little past it, that's fine. Our job is to place our baits as close to the cover as possible on the upstream side. The current will carry the scent of the bait into the cover and hopefully draw the cats out to eat. Here we go. Got him? Yep. Not a lot. Not a lot of weight. But it is a cat. Hey! There we go. Got one! Finally. Yeah. I got her. You got her? Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's really cool. We're just trying to upsize a little bit, but that's, that's a start. A pound and a half, two pounder, I suppose. Yep. It? Pretty, pretty fish. Oh. See ya. See ya. Oh, we're on, on the board. board. Woo! Give me a knuckle. Elizabeth, give me a knuckle. Now get back in your sleeping bag. We'll wake <laughs> you up when we get a big one. To be a successful cat catcher, you can't be afraid of a little nightlife. Even with extremely muddy water, catfish feeding activity increases at night. So as the light starts to fade, the bites start to come quicker. Yeah, told you I was going to get hit right away. Yep, got him. Thank you. Well, about the same size as that last one, huh? But you know what? We're catching them now. That's the that's the most important part. Look at that. Pretty, pretty fish. Circle hook. Doesn't take it deep. They're just, they're coming out. They're coming out to play. Oh yeah, you want to kiss? 
No, maybe not. Okay, the next one's gonna be a bigger one. In the dark of the night on the Red River, channel cat expert John Dreschel and I, along with my daughter Elizabeth, are searching for a big cat on the hunt for a midnight snack. Tell you what, this shallow water anchor right here, this talon, is really helping us here. I mean, we've got the nose, you know, we're anchored off the bow, and we had a you know pretty serious sway. And we just, you know, came to the realization that what a perfect opportunity to use the talon here, and we just pinned it, which really helps slow the sway down. This is a really handy tool. I mean, I just put it on my boat this year, and there's so many different ways that I use it. I just, I never thought, you know, that it would be so darn useful. You ready? Here we go. Oh, yes, a nice one. Atta, buddy. I'm gonna reel this in. That's a nice one, isn't it, Drex? I think so. Got a buddy. And then I get in your hair. I don't know where you are. I'm good. We're gonna need to get that other rod out of the way. <clears throat> Look at you putting the. <clears throat> it is huge. Yep. And I, that water is so murky. You can't see them till they're on the surface. You can't. I think I can get them up this time. Oh, I'm, if I can get them up, I'm gonna turn them into you. Okay. Okay. Oh, there we go. Give me that. Give me that. There we yeah. go. That's a nice one, huh? Man. Look at that. So tell us what kind of catfish that so is. So that's a channel cat. Okay. Um, you can tell the channel cats because their tail is forked. Okay. They got a nice forked tail. We got the rod. Yeah, that's right. That's just a lot, lot of stuff going on in the wood. Just a really pretty fish too, but how powerful can it, you know? Yeah, that's just a... I would guess that's a, wouldn't you say a 10, 11 pound fish, Dan? Yeah, Somewhere probably in that in class, there. you know? Yeah, just a really nice It's not one. even a giant one. Look at that. Yep. And it's all you can, I mean, with the current, it's all you can do to handle them when they're this big. So when they get really big. Oh, man. So our first night on the river ends in success with our first double digit cat. It's the kind of fish that makes you want to come back the next day. And we plan to do so, but before we do, John's gonna give us an in-depth look at the makings of a proper catfishing rig. So John, this is pretty basic, huh? Hook, line, and sinker? Yeah, catfishing is pretty much, it's um, it's just, it's not fancy. It's not like walleye fishing. Um, the fish are on the bottom. We use just a, just a basic catfishing rod. Uh, we have a uh, basic thumb caster reel on it. We use the cast control to help stop our line when we're fishing. Uh, we use a braided line. Uh, 50 pound braid mm -hmm. and then I got one rigged up here all we're using is a sliding no roll sinker and we pour our own because we go through and we get snagged we use a swivel and a barrel swivel because otherwise everything wants to get twisted up mm -hmm. and then just a basic circle hook so it's really it's really a hook a line in your sinker there's really not much to it obviously there's trees in the river and there's lots of snags uh, we lose a lot of sinkers so it just became at a point where the river's right in my backyard. I can fish it a lot, so we started pouring our own sinkers. Mm -hmm. um, we use do-it molds. They're really easy to, to use. Um, they have multiple compartment chambers, so if you want different size weights. With the mold that we're gonna make today, it's a no-roll sinker mold, so you have to put, um, we put a piece of wire in the middle, mm -hmm. and we shut the mold on it. So after we pour it, we can pull that wire out, and we have the place for the line to go through. Gotcha. You get your mold shut, you get your lead hot, um, this is just a Lee hot pot. Um, it has a spout, so all you gotta do is you get your you get your mold right below it. You open it up; it'll pour out until it fills up. Let her sit for a sec. Give that a twist so we know it's loose. Pull that out. Just wait a sec. Pull it up. It is, isn't it? Put your glove on. Grab it and get it out of there. Break that little extra piece off. Looks like you've done there. that before. It doesn't take special equipment to do this. Everything, you could fill a tackle box. You could go to Fleet Farm today, fill a tackle box for $10 and have swivels, hooks, 
and sinkers and take whatever fishing rod you have and go buy some night crawlers or some soccer minnows and go fish. There's lots of spots you can bank fish. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just affordable, it's easy. You don't have to have a boat, you don't have to have fancy equipment. There's big fish and there's lots of fish. So it's a fishery that really is underutilized, but it's a lot of fun. The We Love It Outdoors crew is back on the mighty Red River in search of hungry channel cats. Look at that hole, 16 foot hole. Yeah, that's what we want. They're, just, they're so, right up in front so of So you need to get me that I'll way get... far enough so when I anchor you come back to yep. just the edge of it. So here's where fishing. they are, right here. Yeah. Yeah, right on that line up from that stump to that tree. Just at the... Okay, so, yeah. So, so if we go up you gotta here get another... Me up just a little yep, ways. Yep. I'll put the anchor, we'll come back. You happy here? At this, at this shell. Yeah, I'd say let's just, let's give her 10 minutes here. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Yep. Boy, powerful fish, aren't they? Oh, they're strong. Oh yeah. Look at that, nice one. It's a big one. Yeah. Okay. I, I can't see him at all. Unless he's on the surface, I can't see him. <laughs> that is so awesome. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get him in there. Yes! Give me a knuckle on that! Damn, Shackalaka! Yes! Man, we've been working hard for these buggers and we got a nice one. <sighs> Look at that. Beautiful fish. Oh man! Let's do this before. Yeah, this. just check this someone, out. Can you see that? Look at that. Someone else had him on and lost him. Wow. We've been working a number of different spots. This is like our fourth stop of the day, and we just looked at that little piece of structure there behind us, that old bridge abutment or whatever you want to call it. You know, we drove by it on the way down, and I, we both talked. Look at the concrete. Look at that spot, and we drove by it and. We just decided, you know, it's it's got all the classic features. It's got a little deep water when you looked on your graph. Yep. You marked a couple fish. It's a current break. It creates an eddy. Um, and the, the bottom line is the water's so dirty, at some point you just got to stop and put a bait down and see if there's something there. And that's what we did. We had the 10-minute rule going, and we we're going to try it for 10 minutes. And about eight minutes in, bam, shackalaka. Yes! <laughs> just a powerful so fish. That, that fish is just a little bit bigger than the one we caught last night. Um, it's got a little bigger head, see that? Yep. It's a little thicker yep. here. Yep. I don't know if it's a lot longer, but I think it's just a little bigger than the one we caught last night. Uh, probably in that 11, 10 and a half, 11 pound class. So we got one in the boat, time to put him back in the river and get another one, don't Sounds you think so? Sounds like a plan, right. yep. let's do her. Yeah. Oh boy, let's catch another one of those. Hey, we love it. We do love it, absolutely. Nice. Despite that first big bite, the daylight hours were slow. But like a good horror movie, the monsters come out at night. Hey, we got one here. Elizabeth, you want to catch one? Set the hook nice and easy and start reeling. You got him? There she goes. Now she's got him. Yeah? Let me get this rod on. You give me the rod, Dan, and then you take the net. I got the rod. You OK? No, that's a nice one. Dude. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Red River catfish. We love it. We do love it. Nice. Got a girl. Nice. Atta buddy Drex. Atta buddy Drex. See, when you, as soon as you put that 10 minute, 10 minute warning on, that's when they bite. He's 
going upstream. Oh, come on, up. Oh, man, that's line back. Oh, come oh on. my goodness, that is head shaking. That's a good one. Oh my gosh, is it ever. I don't know. I don't know what I want you to do. I, just, I don't either. I'm just, you're, you just, just concentrate. I'm just hanging on. I'm just, this so isn't the most awesome setup. Do you want to switch? No. Oh. I think he might have saw us that I think time. he did that time. Well, I know where I'm at, though. Give me, give me some of that. <laughs> there we go. Oh boy. Oh, no, you take nice. that. That's your fish. Wait, we were here. We worked for this one, didn't we? Oh my word, did we ever? I we've, mean, uh, we put in some time tonight. It's getting late. I just want to thank you for putting my daughter and I on some fish and showing us a good time. I'm glad we had fun. I absolutely. It has been a blast. So why don't we put this back in the back in the water? Oh, you little, it's like that beaver. <laughs> I think I think he was healthy. You know what? I'll take it. That was that was awesome. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> you got a little back. shower. Continue this adventure by visiting your local Mills Fleet Farm store or shop online at fleetfarm.com for all your sporting good needs and more. fleetfarm.com